just, I love it. Like, even though we're always, the heptathletes are the first ones to get to the track every day, the last ones to leave, it's, it's like, it's not even a chore for us. We just, I mean, we're a different type of athletes, I think. My first heptathlon ever was my only chance to make the world junior uh, team and travel to Poland. And I missed the standard. I scored, the standard was 50-50. I scored 50-43. And so that's one centimeter in the long jump. It's one millisecond in the 800. And so I just remember laying, it was raining that day, finishing the 800, and my coach was like, you missed it by less than a second. And just like the defeat, the defeated feeling uh, that I had, I was just like, I never want to feel this again. So it was kind of a, a moment where it was obviously devastating, but at the same time, it really showed me that I loved it. And the heptathlon, it was, it was the highest score that any Canadian has ever had in their first heptathlon. So it showed me that I probably had some promise in the event and it definitely fueled me to keep competing in it and also kind of taught me, you know, every every centimeter, every distance, every second counts in the heptathlon. So kind of from that moment on, I just learned to like make every moment count. Like, like I was a little hesitant, but I got um, the okay from work to take um, a two month leave. So I came out here just to try it and I absolutely loved it. Like I would call my parents. And, like every time I called them, I was like just raving about it. They're like, we've never heard you so like happy. And it like revitalized my kind of passion for the sport, I think. Um, it's just such a special training environment. I don't know many other places like it that um, just like the community, I mean, the resources, the facilities, everything. The big thing that we train here is once you take off your spikes in one event, you're the next um, event competitor. So it's kind of, you're wearing different hats every day. So say once the high jump's done, once I take off my high jump spikes, I, I, l I leave everything that just happened and then I go on to the next event. So it's a really big test in the mental side of it to be like, okay, maybe that didn't go as well, but I still have six more events that I can make it up in. So um, it's like really learning to, you know, build on each event and not get down and not get like worried about. And I think that's something that's come as I've matured. In I mean, it's, it's definitely something I've dreamed about um, since I was little. Before I even knew it was track and field, my goal, my two like main goals were to earn a scholarship um, to the NCAA was a big thing that I really wanted to do. And then my second one that I, I have dreamed about forever is to go to the Olympics. Um, and I can't tell you how many times I've dreamed about it, like thought about it, like um, every make a wish I've always <laughs> it's been my like go to. So I think even the opportunity um, this year is like really why I took the leave of absence from work and um, moved out here and kind of uprooted my life for this year to really go for it and give it like the best shot that I can. Because um, I mean stepping out in that Olympic Stadium will be like the realization of years of training and hard work and sacrifices and commitment like realized which like I can't imagine what that will feel like but probably like one of the best feelings of my life I'm thinking so even the opportunity to go to Olympic trials and give it like everything knowing that I really put everything into it and put everything on the line uh, regardless of the outcome obviously I'm hoping to be on the team to Rio but um, that's kind of why I really made the commitment this year to come out here because just to be able to to walk away and say you know I did everything that I could and I'm really proud of myself for for going for it.